makes makes sense and and about the the measurement you you said that it's it's very important it's kind of the starting point for discussion and getting people to understand so do you use the sense device with the pads on the thigh or how, how do you do the measurement yes yeah yeah yes all my clients yeah I use yeah. it. And is it is it... again because I said the major problem is that what they feel is not happening. Mm, yeah. It is not happening. Yeah. And and basically is it always the kind of the first thing that you do the measurement and then you start the discussions yes. of the of the yes. lifestyle. If people like book in for like a program with me in good time, I will make sure because I have these sensors, I give out and come back and analyze. So so if I have time, I will give the part of the program is that I get the sensor before our third session together hmm. and at uh, sometimes at it, i don't have time for that or maybe they come in and say can i get a session next week and i have availability i will give them the sensor while they are in the program hmm. but the sensor makes my advice a thousand percent as a hundred percent better yeah. because it can be customized and i ask them where is the key for where is the key for your success and the sensor is a part of the key to make me make me able to find the key. Mm. Yeah. Because as I said before, most people are inactive. Uh, just this morning, I've been sitting with with reports, and I have a woman. She's almost normal weight, but just want to lose a, a little bit more kilos. And 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 she's a little, you know, she's she's not that tall, yeah. and and she is quite active. So her report is actually good. But her intake of food is still too high according to her to her measurement. As and I told her, I told her, you have to compare like a small car and a big car. Uh, and if they run like 10k, the big car will still burn more calories than the small car. Mm. And you are a small car. So even though you're running 10ks three times a week as she's doing, the other four days She's not running. Her her total energy expenditure was actually quite low, mm. below or only eighteen hundred. And the day she's been running, she's been burning between six, seven hundred calories more mm. working out. So the difference between working out, not working out, and that also to see. Yeah, in her example, it was that she still thinks she's burning more than she does. And again, in the sense system, we Fibion, I, it's a system analyzing the numbers. I get the, the, um, the estimate of how many calories my client is burning. Mm. So I'm not sitting down writing uh, uh, diet plans in calories. You know, I'm too old for that <laughs> because it doesn't, help, it doesn't work. But, but it, yeah, just giving examples of how much food could that be? And they're like, oh, I can really see that. No, I've got one portion too much mm. there maybe not drink uh, whatever they're drinking with calories. So it just gave me like a foundation of a conversation with them about their lifestyle. Mm. And then, as I said in the beginning, my, my purpose is to give them advice that are like normal, normal for a normal day. And, and one advice could especially be the days you're not working out, you don't eat two portions uh, at uh, lunch and dinner, maybe only one portion to get the numbers to to even out. Mm. And 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 do you use the energy expenditure Fibian report for showing yes. this one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because they're sending me the photos, and 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 for example, if the purpose for them with my program is to lose ten kilos, and I have the photos, and I I can the numbers of calories almost in my mind, and I look at their energy expenditure, then I can see if they should add more food or less food. Mm. I also have a lot of women to know I'm I've only been talking about people uh, losing weight, but I also have a lot of uh, women above 40 that their muscle mass is too low and they're eating like I call it in Danish, I call it you, you eat like a bird, mm. you know, they eat so little. So their strategy have been since uh, 20s and 30s not to be active. And the reason why they haven't got fat is because they don't eat. Mm. But now they turn 40 or 50, go through menopause, they have so low muscle mass, and then they also get more fat. Mm. And these, I also show them their metabolism because I want them to eat more mm. in order to uh, be able to build the muscle mass. So I use it both way around. Mm. Yeah, yeah, makes makes sense. And it's good in the report that you can compare the days and see that this this is really from exactly. the activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, if I have sense reports that are very low in activity and the food is also low in intake, I'm like, 
this is a really bad strategy. It's mm. bad strategy for your muscle mass. It's really bad strategy for your bone mm. bones, for your again mental health and your energy. And then I use the numbers to 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 tell them, you know, you you are low what recommendable for activity to being a healthy human being. Mm. And tell them about, you know, if you want all the vitamins, you know, you cannot eat that little mm. of food. You know, that's a strategy. They're eating less in order to be to fit a size 36 or 38 mm. and the muscle mass is low. So then again, I use the report. Mm. The report really makes me the foundation for for the conversation. You know, which way can I see that go? And sometimes people come in my room and they what they think is what happened. But sometimes mostly they don't. They don't know what what they're doing wrong. That's why they want my help. Mm. And at that point, the sense measurement at the, at their lifestyle is amazing, amazing tool. Mm. I love my yeah. report. Yeah. <laughs> good, good <to> <laughs> I love it. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good to hear. And and you use a lot the energy expenditure report. How how do you use the the sedentary behavior, sitting, how do you look at what kind of feedback do you give give about that part? Yeah, I look at, of course, so how, how, how many hours they're sitting, how many hours, uh, of course, I don't want them to be sitting more than 10 hours a mm. day because it's yeah. unhealthy. And again, their energy expenditure is too low. That's why I tell them if you're sitting more than 10 hours a day, plus you sleep, you should eat like a bird in order to be normal weight. Mm. <laughs> Otherwise you yeah. will gain fat. Then I want them to have in total six hours where they're not sitting mm. out of the 24 hours a day. And that's a minimum. Mm. And and then I want at least, at least, at least half an hour, I will say an hour of moderate to higher intensity a day. And then we are, we're also talking about, that's where I do the coaching. How can we make that happen? Because many of them think, oh, then I have to go to the gym all the time. But then we're talking about, can you take your bike to work? Can you walk to work? Mm. I really try to make some, make them to make, uh, help them to make some changes in their lifestyle. Mm. So again, as I said many times, it could be a new normal. Mm. So it's not like they finish that day. And then they, when they finish the day, they think, oh, my God, Lotta said I should uh, walk at least 8,000 8, steps and now only have 1,000. Mm. So it should be using their body the whole day. And what I'm telling them is like you can you can use like 500 kroners in one shop or you can use 100 kroners in five shops. So if you're just a little bit active in the morning, a little bit active during the day and in lunch, then when you come home from work, if you use your body body to transport yourself around, then you are normal active. Mm. Because they think they're doing what they normally do. And then they think, oh, they bought this a program with me. Now I better go for an hour when I come home from work. Mm. Because they haven't broken that, if you understand what I mean, they haven't broken that code to use their body during the day. And I had a really, really funny example because I had one of the executives, she, like, she got a little bit angry with me, I'm used to that. So so she said, I, I don't have time and I also have kids and I don't have time to go for a walk. And I said, no, I understand. Can you try and think from now on, you're only allowed to sit when it's not, I said, when you, you really need to sit. Mm. Otherwise, you're not allowed to sit. Mm. So, so she said, okay. And, and every single time you have, it's, it's possible for you really try to, to just take some steps. And she increased her report, her activity with 20%. Yeah. And during the day, and, and, and she was asked, asked her, can you give me an example? She said, okay, I'm sitting in a meeting and with all the other executives and we need water or coffee, or we forgot somebody thing in the printer. And then we called like, you know, the secretary, yeah. but I don't call her anymore. I get up and get it myself. Yeah. She said it every single time I normally get my employee or my whatever to pick it up for me. But now I think about you and I do it myself. She said, I come home from work late. My husband is also late for work. We want to do like just order some takeaway from the Chinese yeah. uh, down the street. And then we say, oh, I don't want to pick it up. I'm too tired. I'm also tired. I pick it up, she yeah. said. So it's really interesting about just changing the habit, the way of thinking of activity yeah. without changing her life, her day, she, she increased it with 20%. Yeah, yeah. So also what I tell them, if they're sitting all day, they come home, I don't care what they do, uh, whatever, start dancing, uh, whatever, clean up the cupboard, uh, the basement, fix your garden. You cannot sit all day, whole day and go home and sit. 
And when I show the reports and they can see that is what they're doing. Mm. They wake up, a little bit of body activity, they sit all day, a little bit of body activity, then they sit again. Mm. I'm like, you, you're going to die too early. And, you know, again, I can show a lot of studies. If you're normal active, you ling- live longer. But also the last year of you live, you can you can still be, how do you call it in English, mobile. Mm. You can still, uh, you don't have to be in an elder home because you can still move your body. Yeah. And these studies can also motivate them to to be more active. Mm. So this is not in the, when you're young, of course, but when you above 40, it's about, I call it, it's a, it's the pension. It's the body, the pension in the body. It's so the pension in the body is not about money in the account. It's about being healthy mm. and activity is the key for that. Yeah, really, really makes sense. And, and yeah, it, it, it really makes sense. And, and you are watching the activity clock. Do you, do you look like different days? Do you show them different days? So how do you, how do you kind of use it? Do you look the long sitting periods yes. and uh, yeah. Yeah. What I see, I see difference between during the week and weekends. Yeah. Uh, and I also discuss that with them because I have some of the people I have in my program, I like have listened to what I've said and used their body as a tra- kind of transport going to work. Either they walk a little bit longer from their car or they take their bike. In Denmark, it's very normal to ride a bicycle to work. And if they do that Monday to Friday, some of them have really good activity level just being, just going to work during the week. But then they come to the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, and they don't go to work. And then the activity level is low. And some I see maybe are more active in the weekends because again, they're doing their house, doing their garden, or really, you know, want to be active because they know they've been inactive uh, during the week. So I, I definitely discuss the difference between going to work or not going to work. And some people again think I'm, I'm sitting more during the week because I'm at work and I don't sit that long in the weekends, but then I show you the report and then they're also sitting in the weekend. So that is also something we can talk about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you quickly said about what do you say about the moderate to vigorous activity? How do you use the reports and how do you, how do you coach for that? You are more about non-exercise activity, but how do you coach the actual kind of exercise training, training part. Yeah. What I do, I, I advise all my clients to work out minimum two times a week or best is to three times a week. And what I do, I, I combine strength training, mobility training and cardio intervals in one program with all my clients. Mm. The programs are very, very different. I have fit clients who can lift heavy weight and do sprints. And I have my oldest client, she's 79, and she's sitting on the bicycle and going as hard as she can for 30 seconds. And for you and me, it would be very easy. So it's with their own reference. Mm. I don't have like a model. I go, it's for the reference of the client, but I get all my clients to do intervals. The effect on the um, cardiovascular system is so much higher in uh, in interval training and also tell them that interval training, the high intensity uh, cardio training can be a key that can use to get healthier because they don't uh, have enough enough activity during the day. Mm. So it's like I'm telling them again, because all my clients, they're, they're good at numbers. I say it's like working out, getting a higher salary. And of course, I'm telling them what happens with the, uh, the blood vessels and da, 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 why they're doing the intensive training. Mm. Yeah, makes makes sense. So that's also what I'm telling them if, yeah, for the, for example, if, if you only work, that's people really think I'm against Pilates and yoga and I'm not. If you have a lot of time and I love yoga, everything about the breathing. So, but it's like if, if you are driving your car, sitting down at work, going home and don't do any kind of normal uh, activity and then you you the three hours you have availability a week to do uh, some kind of exercise you go and do yoga or pilates then you have no effect on your uh, muscle mass your bone density Mm -hmm. or the cardiovascular system and i tell them okay if you have five six hours available a week keep stick to the yoga but you need to work to improve your cardiovascular level and your strength uh, uh, training and then again, show the numbers because some of them are doing Pilates and yoga while they're wearing the sense mm. sensor. And, and then they can see that that's like walking 
normally just with low intensity. Mm. So that's, I said to them, okay, you really need something to get your metabolism up. Uh, and that's, it's like working out with a higher intensity mm. and like, oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really makes sense. So basically you are promoting non-exercise activity throughout the day to get the energy expenditure higher and not sit too much, mm. but then going high intensity mm. and strength training to actually get the fitness gains. Right. Yeah. 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 And some people say, oh, you know, I'm again, I have had a new hip uh, years ago or uh, I cannot run because of my knee. But but that's the. Uh, the interval training and the strength training is is referred to where the client, of course, is. Mm. It's not like uh, I'm saying it, it, heavy strength training should be deadlifting or squats because I have a lot of my clients, senior clients that cannot squat or deadlift, but the session can still be hard. Yeah on their muscles yeah. and the cardiovascular system. It just has to be customized. Yeah. And how do you usually do the strength training? You, you own a gym. Do you, do you always encourage mm. them to go gym or do home, home strength training? How, how, how is that? Go to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely go to the gym. You know, uh, I love training and also doing Corona and, and stuff, you know, doing training at home. is like, it, it's not the same. Yeah. It's like going to the gym. No, not doing laundry, just leave your phone outside the gym and just go in and use it like kind of meditation and feel your body and work out. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot better. Yeah. No, sounds, sounds good. And, and then about the measurements, you start the coaching with the measurement. Do you do repeat measurements to check the progress or how do you yes. do it? Yeah. Yes. I told you the boot camps I have health boot camps, a 12 weeks, 12 weeks program. So they get the sensor, the weather sensor in the beginning. And if I had time, as I said a few times before, they have it before I meet them the first time. And then they have like in the middle of the like 12 weeks or so five, six weeks, they wear the sensor again. And then we sit down and we talk about why did you start here? And of course, I measure their weight and if they're cardiovascular, how much the cardiovascular level is higher and muscle mass and fat mass has been reduced. And then we sit down and also compare the reports. What kind of changes have you made? I really want them to achieve a kind of level where they feel they can obtain it with, with no effort. Do you understand what mm. I mean? It's like in the yeah. beginning, they use a lot of effort in uh, changing their habit, but as they get better, they should keep a kind of get to a stage where it's a new normal. So they don't like use effort to, to do the new habit. So that's why we, we compare the reports and how far are we? Mm. Why did you come? What do you want to change? How much weight have you lost? How, how can you feel your body change? How much better is your sleep? So I do like a mid, during the, the, the boot camp, I do like in between testing. And then after they're finished, of course, we, I don't do the sense report in the, in the end. I do in the beginning and in the middle. Mm. Yeah. To compare. Yeah. 